button. Here we go. So, uh, hello. Um, my name is Matthias Delvig. This is a talk about, uh, it's, it's called the balancing act between services and products. And it's actually about why pulp releases so damn frequently. So uh, to me, I am a pulp developer, uh, actually um, in almost all areas active there. I am based in Nordrhein-Westphalia, which is Germany. I do maintain the Pulp Ansible and Pulp Gem plugins. I am maintaining also the Pulp Glue Lib, the Pulp CLI, and Squeezer, which are the um, Ansible modules or some set of Ansible modules. And throughout the project, you may either find me as MDelvig or sometimes X9C4. Um, so Pulp is a project, and that's one of the first things I learned that has many stakeholders. And those stakeholders need something from us, obviously. So they need installable, stable products, and sometimes they need service deployments. And I think these are very two very different things. So the installable stable products, uh, we know how to do that. We did this for years. And it's basically, we do release branches in Git that correspond to the Y part of our releases. And then after that, we tag certain commits and this, respond, uh, this corresponds to the Z stream. And from those release tags, in the end, we build packages and everyone's happy. You may be missing the X. Don't talk about pulp four. That's a general rule here. <laughs> now, for service deployments, this is really the new thing, as we call it, Neuland. And what they want is they always want the, the newest features. And what they really need is a fast reaction time. So whenever they see a bug fix that needs to be fixed, then that's probably better now because it's live in production. And eventually, uh, what they really want is 24-7. And so the first reaction is we want to deploy from source. What do I need to say? Really? Really deploy from source? Let me ask another question. Would you install Postgres from source in your production? I bet not. And so my pitch here is, what if we can make Pulp a little bit more like that? And um, what I get from it is, Actually, Pulp is kind of a library anyway. So Pulp has a bunch of features. I don't think there's anyone using all of them at the same time. But they are used by different product and projects. Here we are back at the multiple stakeholders problem. So it really is a library, not for functions and methods as usual, but more like a library for API um, features that you can use and, and build your workflows on top of. So the only problem that's now left for the services is we need to find a way to deliver bug fixes in basically no time. And I think about hours more like days here. Um, my uh, I think to solve this, I invented a new release policy, and I call it the release whenever policy. It's not quite the release feature-based and milestone-based, and it's also not released based on a uh, release based on specific dates, but it's release whenever. And what you need to do that is to make sure that your main branch is always clean and ready to be released at any time. This is the most important part here. 
because if your main branch has some weird quirk and is just not releasable, then you cannot get the next book fix out before fixing that problem. Also, when your main branch is in a good state, then there's really no point in running additional tests on the release process. And these tests on our release process, I think they took up to one hour, which really slowed down releasing a lot. And the third thing for which I need to take a little tangent here, uh, Pulp is a plugin system and the plugins are managed in separate repositories. So a lot of time it happened that a change was needed to be distributed. And for example, uh, one change, one part of the change was in Pulp Core, another part of the change was in Pulp File. And now you need to somehow manage to get those changes in simultaneously. And at the same time, Git repositories are really an asynchronous thing. So this just doesn't work. And so we needed to adopt a little bit and start only uh, developing plugin features against released versions of Pull. I mean, in the development, you can always bundle up some uh, source branches from uh, the main branch versions. But um, for before you can merge the change in pulp file, for example, you just need to have the parts in pulp, uh, pulp core merged and released. And this means not only pulp core, but also the plugins are always in a state where we can safely cut the next release. So um, with respect to pulp core specifically, we came up with a few rules and these are quite easily sta stated as this. Um, we decided Tuesday is our pulp core meeting day and so we made Tuesday our pulp core releasing day also. And the first rule is if on a given Tuesday there is a feature in the main branch that was not yet released, we make a new Y. If on a given Tuesday there is any bug fix in any other active release branch, we make zero stream releases for them. I should add, if there's a bug fix in the main branch, we probably backport it to the last stable branch and do a release also. And also, if bug fixes are urgent, then you can just do a release at any time. And quite incidentally, I think we have released a version of Pulp Core 340 every single day in the last, in, in, yeah, since four days. And yeah, this first rule that we may be releasing a new Vive version every Tuesday is the reason why uh, Pulp Core release numbers start started really ticking very fast. But it turns out not every week we get to merging a feature. And so it's not like you can expect a new Vive release every single Tuesday. Also, if you are a plugin developer and you depend on a Pulp Core plugin API feature, then it's by this rule only at most one week you need to wait for the feature to be released and to actually get your feature in the plugin available. Obviously, to make this work, releasing must be easy. And the release process has been very, very complicated in the past, and we improved it a lot. Um, my personal goal here is that triggering a new release should really be just clicking a single button. And the whole process should not take too long. I think ideally a few minutes so that I will actually stay around monitoring that process and not going off doing something different and just forgetting about uh, this release and then weeks later realizing, oh, it failed. 
we are, I think we are almost there, but there's still some work left to do. So with releasing very often, there's another thing, and this, uh, and I want to highlight this, we do breaking changes. Um, usually we try to do no breaking changes to the API at all. Sometimes it's unavoidable, but uh, with respect to the API that we expose to our plugins, we kind of need to do breaking changes eventually. But we don't want to have that to happen every week because then plugin developers would just have nothing else to do than running after all these breaking changes and probably would never release compatible plugin versions with our latest pub core branch. And that would be a bad thing to do. So breaking changes cannot happen that often. And we introduced a policy that uh, breaking changes should be bundled up in certain releases. The last one happened just a few days ago is 340. The next one, which is already decided, is 355. I can talk about why a bit on the next slide. And after that, if we think this went well, we will probably stick to adding the version of 0.15.0 to it, which then will lead to uh, a 3.70.0 for the one after that breaking change release in the future. Um, I said we already needed to decide uh, to pick the 3.55 release. And the reason for that is that plugins can now add a requirement like uh, they depend on pulp core at least three. Uh, well, there's there's a typo here. It needs to be 340 and not 430. And at most up to 355. And obviously, everything between 340 and 354 is not yet released but we promise that we won't break plugins until then. In the past, it turned out that we have these releases about twice a year, maybe three, four times, but usually not. But, but I don't think not more often. Oh, on the other hand, there's not so much uh, prior evidence yet. And Ideally, we can deprecate a plugin feature before removing it so that uh, the plugins see a deprecation warning for some time and the plugin maintainer has time to adjust to the pulp core change that is going to break them. And for that, the plugin CI already shows very loud that a uh, deprecation warning was triggered. And with that, I want to thank you for listening and I'm opening up with, opening it up for QA, for questions. And I hope I could show you the good reason why suddenly, it is, is it like half a year ago, a pub core version started ticking very, very fast. It's not need to, uh, you don't need to update every single version in between. But um, yeah, you can expect new features to be released soon and not wait for like one or two months as we had it before. So any questions? Jared. What do you think about uh what Brian was showing off yesterday in his talk about our analytics data, where it doesn't seem that many people upgrade very often at all. Contrasting with our new release policy, where we're basically creating a new version almost every week. Um, I don't see a conflict here. 
they can just upgrade whenever they want. And if they need a specific feature, then they can have a look at the change log and pick a version between when it was introduced and the latest one. Yeah, and people are installing Paul, right? So those users, the you know existing users, might not get that bug fix right away, but somebody is getting it, and we are making it available, and the upstream users are testing it. So it's yes. definitely um, benefiting us to release more often. There's maybe one uh, thing to consider here, and that is we are only we we cannot maintain all our Y branches with bug fixes. So we try to keep it down to like five. I hope we can ne we we never get over five. Um, and those branches are usually picked by one of our stakeholder products, the ones that need the long-term stable packages and not the latest services thing. Um, it would be wise to try to align with these versions, I think, to get bug fixes. But if you do that, I don't think there's a conflict with our fast release policy. Grant? Or Jared, does that answer your question? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Grant? Um, I was just going to add one of the things, and we talked about this yesterday with Brian's talk, is one of the things we have to be aware of is the bias in the data that we're gathering. Um, a lot of the data we're gathering is coming as the result of those downstream products that Matthias talked about deciding it's OK to send analytics data. And those products are very deliberately on long-term versions because that's what the users of those products expect. For people that are installing Pulp on their own, um, you know, as I'm, I'm just going to use Pulp in my installation, and oh, there's an analytics thing. Yeah, I don't care. So we're not getting any of those. Even folks that that are uh, like Microsoft is using Pulp as their back end. I have no idea if they turned analytics on, and they're not going to tell us. Um, so. The data is useful, but it has a, a built-in bias that we have to be very aware of. We don't know how many people are are upgrading every week because a lot of the people that anybody who's running pulp on their own, you know, just for just naked pulp to manage their content, who hasn't decided at installation time, I want to turn analytics on. Well, you will never know that they're upgrading every week. Um, so it's it, it look at the data draw conclusions from the data, but be very aware that the data is a very incomplete view into the world of pulp. That's that's my thing. Well, I believe the I analytics are on by default. Yeah, they are on by default. But I mean, I, I still think Grant's point stands. But um, uh, and I guess I want to add to it with a different perspective. It doesn't take away from it. Um, I think, and sorry, Matthias, this is not about your talk. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, the thing about the the data reliability and like drawing conclusions from it, I think, is tricky business. So, like, I totally agree in there. But the thing the thing is that what I what the kinds of things that I'm really looking for in the analysis there are for biases, and I don't think that there's a bias between people who decide to turn on or off analytics versus any other sort of behavior, like I'm going to upgrade frequently or infrequently. So even though it doesn't represent certainly 100% of our user base, I, I don't, I think that you could draw reasonable conclusions from it. Um, and I'll just contrast that with, here's a here's a definite bias, getting back to your talk, Matthias, here's a definite bias that comes out of the, the analytics data is when you have a particular product using a version of pulp core and it's dominating the number of user installs that are being reported that is a major bias in terms of like how are our users upgrading boy you got to really think hard about that one there um but on the other hand we see the new versions of pulp core being installed and used 
it's just not that they get the whole the the large part of the exactly the 21 installations yeah and i and i think that's yeah, agreed and that's because of the biasing that having a, yeah. a single segment report creates in the data analysis um I also want to say, hey, everybody, I think we owe Matthias a huge thanks. You can tell him anytime you want for driving this in the pulp community. Um, it's been excellent work. And um, going to, to your point, Jared, I I also don't see a, a um, or Matthias's response to you, I also don't see any, any sort of conflict between this. Um, really, what's great about this is, is that um, it allows users who want to move fast in terms of upgrades to move fast. And it allows users who want to um, remain uh, on stable, trusted long-term versions that they have already been using and not having a problem with to continue doing that. So I, I think really what it does is it enables more choice. And that's a good thing. Um, I think Cheetah's hand was up next. Cheetah? Yeah. Um, if, is there any set of long-term versions uh, so to some extent uh, where we can uh, consider that as a stable and that can be mentioned in the pulp release notes and uh, a table can be maintained? Okay, these are the uh, versions, five set of versions or three set of versions uh, being yep. kept as a, a term uh, stable and it will be tested against that and it will be removed. So there are more likely the chances that those versions will go off also, right? The, the speed of uh, level of uh, releases, those versions will go up. So being a, a, any user, being as a user, uh, interested to see if what are the versions, uh, a, a table of list of versions, and this version has been removed. Yeah. No longer it will be a long-term version or stable version. Um, consider that. It's a little bit complicated because we cannot decide which will be the long terms well we we never call it long term support branches uh we uh once decided we maintain the latest version as the the good one and for our stakeholders specifically we maintain some older branches uh we usually don't know what branch they will pick when we make the branch so that's why we cannot call them long term support branches from the beginning and also not put it in the release notes for that reason. Uh, what you can do is you can have a look at the Pulp Core repository on GitHub, and in the template config you will find, and it's it's good, very good hidden, I must say. You can find a list of branches that are still supported. But also as the upstream project, we cannot really make any uh, long time yeah. uh, promises here. I think. Yeah, the same can be exported here in this release note so that we will be keep monitoring this because I'm not sure is there any uh, channel or a notification place where if any new releases or anything is being removed from long um, older versions list, then will we get notified, um, okay, we are run, yeah. If you can see, Brian has put a, a link to the location I was just trying to, uh, I was just describing. Thank you, Brian. Um, the, the issue really is that some of it is out of our control and we need to adjust to other, um, uh, to external um, conditions there. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, Kirin? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, um, also one needs to keep in mind that this is like pulp cores policy of doing all of these releases. And then of course the plugins go at different speeds depending on the plugin. And the users of course don't usually sit around waiting for new pulp core features unless it's a feature that translates to all the plugins somehow. They tend to probably wait for plugin features. And then so, so that's a, another reason why there isn't really a contradiction between pulp core having the fast uh, release cycle and users being slow to upgrade they, well if if there weren't any users that you have you have these some users who want the newest greatest things and they can move fast and plugins can move fast because pulp core is moving fast uh, so yeah 
it's it's changed the relationship, I guess, between pulp core and plugins somewhat. Yes, a bit. And thank you for adding this. I I would say the uh, release or possible release every week thing is definitely a pulp core and not a plugin thing. That's right. But on the other hand, the release whenever policy applies to plugins just as well. And yeah, maybe I should add uh, these these rules with a release on every Tuesday by a set um, condition is what really helped us stop discussing hours about whether we want to make a release or not. You can just look at the repository and it tells you today's release date. Brian? Um, I have my hand up, but Cheetah, uh, uh, Kieran, did you have your hand up about something first? Uh, so only thing is, uh, is there any uh, one other question? Like, is there any notification channel which we will be come to know instead of we go come here and then keep checking what is the new releases or something like that? There's the release announcements on the discourse. Is that what you mean? Yeah. So we yeah. have. Yeah, announcements. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, look at that link, Cheetah. That grant is faster than I quickest draw in the in the East Grant. Okay, thanks. Uh Kieran, did you have a question or comment? Okay. Um any more questions? We are at our um, I have one comment about this LTS thing. Sure, go ahead. Um, I, I'm, I've gone back and forth on whether an LTS is a good idea for Pulp over the years. I'm kind of in the middle at this point. Um, and, and here's why. Um, our users are always asking us for an LTS. Uh, Cheetah, you'd be like the hundredth person to ask us for an LTS. Um, and maybe we should just give it to them. I don't know. Um, but then one of the reasons why, so I think LTS is feel good in terms of like, literally it's just a feeling because I don't actually think it provides any more safety. And here's why, um, like the automated tests that you get, say that we backport fixes to an LTS, which is what that means. The automated fixes that you're, that, or the automated tests that we run are the same automated tests that we run on newer branches as well. And so, you're not really getting any more safety, but it's interesting because, you know, I feel like everyone still wants an LTS, even though I maintain that it's not any safer. Um, but like, meanwhile, while convincing a large number of users, I don't talk to on a daily basis that this is not any safer. They're looking at pulp from the outside and like, well, there should just be an LTS. So like, maybe there just should be, I, I don't, I don't know. Um, but I guess that's my point Cheetah is that, you're getting the same level of safety if you were just to upgrade. So I don't think you would do any better with an LTS. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I think that the additional safety is basically that you don't get new features that aren't uh, vetted yet. That's fair. Uh, that's our time too. Sorry, I've taken us over. All right, thank you very much, Matthias, and thank you everyone for the great discussion.